Can you hear that? Now that's 15 frames per second. Hello everyone, this is Take Kayo and welcome to VHT Studios. This is my first shooting impressions with the brand new Fujifilm X-T4. On my other previous video was my first look, so I hadn't yet really spent a lot of time with it, but I've shot with it just for a few days and I have a pretty good idea of how this camera will perform, but I will be doing more of a long-term test as I spend more time shooting with this and using a lot of the new features, which I haven't had a chance to check everything out. So let's start my first shooting impressions video now. First things first is I actually want to thank Chris Janakis, aka Chris Meets Chris, who did the intro portion for the video. And so as soon as this came in, we took off downtown. We were ready to shoot. Chris, what are you doing, man? I'm getting all this gear ready for you. The, your vlogging rig? Yeah. This is my light kit. We're, we're going to get bullied out here with, uh, with all this uh, yeah, vlogging. It's Friday, it's Friday night. Uh, uh, this building is taller than I thought. The, like the first, yeah, I thought we were there. And we were shooting around Chinatown, uh, it, the Chinatown area. And so, anyways, so we uh, did my our first shooting impressions video. And I'm gonna kind of like quickly, I'm not gonna be as long winded as my first look. That was a very long video. And I apologize for those of you just looking for something short and sweet, like the Japanese. If you want something short and sweet, maybe go to Engadget or CNET. And if you want something kind of a decent length, I think um, the Christian Jordan at DP Review would have done a stellar job. I hadn't seen their video, but hey guys, I think they probably did a good job. But uh, this is gonna be uh, less in depth. I'm not gonna go through all the features, but I'm gonna kind of hit the good, the sort of indifferent, and then things that I think they can improve on the X-T4. So let's start with the good. The first thing is, I already tested it, I love I love the shutter. The shutter mech is awesome. Uh, I, I did a comparison on the uh, the X-H1, which I'm actually shooting this video on, with uh, this, and I actually did feel that the X-H1 was a little bit more dampened, and I think probably has to do with the fact that the um, the camera body is, is bigger and thicker and heavier, um, but I also compared it against the X-T3, and so when you hit the X-T3, it just, it just sounds, Ugh. Sounds ugh, isn't it? Compared to this, which is just so nice. Nice and smooth. And that has to do with uh, the entire new, the, the magnetic spring they have. It is a deeper press shutter button like the X uh, Pro 3, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I kind of got used to it because of uh, the dampening and the quietness of the shutter mech. And that's probably the first thing you'll notice even before IBIS, because you know, not you don't need IBIS for every shot. And so when you need it, it's there. When you don't need it, it's kind of invisible because the, the body is less, it feels more like you're holding the X-T3. And so I'm gonna just maybe take this motor drive off here. It's not a motor drive. It's the grip, the battery grip. And so now it feels more like an X-T3 that's, you know, a little bit 20% overweight, 15, it's like when you go on vacation. So it's a little bit bigger, heavier. And I think this is probably the combo that a lot of the, the pro shooters that had X-T3s that, um, kind of did weddings and event photography and things like that. They wanted the, the 16 to 55 F 2.8 and wished that it was stabilized. Well, this is now stabilized. Other than the, the shutter mech, I would say is the number one thing you'll probably notice. Uh, the number two thing is the IBIS. I did some quick little vlogging test. Maybe I'll insert it here. All right, I'm off. I'm too busy to even hang out with my buddies, but a man's got to eat. Hey, Jer. How's it going? It's going good yourself. Good. I'm, I'm doing a vlogging test. Is that all right? Can I include you in a vlogging test? All right. Or are you camera shy? A little camera shy. A little bit? Well, I'll show you the content and then if it's uh, not to your liking. I mean, your hair looks perfect. All right, I figured out how to turn on the, um, the, the OIS the IBIS as well as the digital image stabilization, so that's on right now. And uh, it's a bit of a crop, a 10% crop, 
Uh, you could do this in post as well. A lot of apps, even something as simple as iMovie has uh, a sort of a digital image stabilization by cropping in, it, it tries to correct for it. And then now I'm gonna switch it off and see if you can tell a difference. But you know, a wide angle lens while vlogging, it's still not the easiest way to stabilize. But let's, uh, let's switch it off and see what happens, right? Right now, so I have OIS and IBIS, but no digital image stabilization. So uh, it looks like uh, with the new, um, the IBIS mech in the X-T4, as well as the updated firmware, that there's different, in terms of how much stabilization, the 10 to 24 is, is much better than it used to be on the X-H1, not just the, the one stop better. Because when the X-H1 first came out, uh, the 10 to 24 with IBIS, uh, it, was, it wasn't very high. It was like 3.5 or four stops, and a lot of the other lenses had up to five or 5.5. So um, this is it's getting the full 6.5 um, stabilization on the X-T4, which is great. And I'm not sure, I'm, I'm like I'm like rambling, so you can sort of see, uh, can you guys tell the difference? I mean, when I stop moving and I'm standing still, it's probably the best way to tell, because as you're moving and you want really good stabilization, really what you want is you want to use a, a proper gimbal. That's where you're gonna get the full stabilization. So I'm gonna stop now and get some food for Camera Girl. And I thought, you know, I like, the t I like my 10 to 24, on non-stabilized bodies because like for instance the X Pro 3, I like it on here because this is a nice light small camera. I don't need to see myself when I vlog. I don't I don't have this need. You know, I've gotten so used to vlogging now that you know, I don't need the screen facing me while I'm vlogging. You tend to kind of look off to the side. And so I don't mind that I can't see myself. And and the 10 to 24, the IBIS on, the OIS on it is okay. And on the X-H1, it was a little bit better, but on the X-T4, I, I didn't think I would be that, I won't say blown away, but that impressed, but I, it's clearly visible. You can clearly see the improvement in the image stabilization on the X-T4. So I'll be excited to do more tests. I did a little bit of video testing other than vlogging with Chris Meets Chris when we were shooting with the 35 F2 and I was happy with that. And then of course there are uh, different levels of stabilization. There's one where you kind of, you're doing more panning and other ones that are a little bit more randomized. And so they've really refined their firmware in here. And that's my number three. So first Shutter Mac and then IBIS. And number three, the star of the show is actually the updated firmware in here. And Fujifilm has added tons and tons of features. And maybe I'll just kind of put an insert here so you can kind of see. Because on my other video, I went through it and it was a 50 something minute video, but there's tons of improvements. So since the X-T3 and then the X-T30 came out and then the, the X, Pro 3 and then the X100V and Fujifilm has incrementally added more and more features. The biggest leap was probably with the X Pro 3. They added HDR, minus six EV autofocusing, uh, focus limiter. They had put a lot of cool things in the X Pro 3. And so now that you look at the X-T4 versus the X-T3, there seems to be a huge gap in the firmware and the function that you can get with an updated firmware. And it almost feels like it's a different processor and a completely different firmware. I mean, it is a different firmware, but I mean, it's a, a completely new family of type of firmware because there's so much headroom on this X processor 4 that as they put, like they put a lot of features in the X-T4 and I thought I would see it maybe kind of hiccup and skip and maybe it can't handle all these new features. It handles it like a superstar like Adidas Superstar. It, um, I didn't find anything crashing or skipping and it just worked really nice. Unlike the X-H1, when that came out, uh, that processor sensor combo was kind of on its last legs. And when they added all these extra features, you got, you got a lot of crashes on the X-H1. And the X-H1 got a lot of firmware updates to fix some of the crashes. It took them a while to really refine that uh, firmware and I don't think it's gonna get any major firmware update because that older X processor Pro, which is the third iteration of that processor, I think it had had it. But the X processor 4 with the quad core processor, they added all these new features and that really is, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, what did I notice the most is the shutter mech 
And then what you notice the most is how you interact and engage with the camera through its UI and through all the extra features and having that, uh, you know, I had mentioned it quite a bit, I'm sure everyone's gonna mention it, switching from video to stills and having a separate, completely separate menu system. So if you are a hybrid shooter, you will immediately notice that you'll have a lot more fun shooting with this and not wasting time looking for features, wondering like, where is that feature? It, once you set it up, it's set up. And so uh, with the X-T3, hopefully they'll push a lot of that, but even still having this immediate switching from video to stills is something that is awesome. I have a, one of my brothers, I have three brothers, uh, he loves Sony and because it has kind of like a quick video feature and he wondered why Fuji doesn't have it. Fuji did have it in the earlier cameras, they got rid of it because a lot of us stills guys like, we kept on pressing that button. We don't want it there. Please have a dedicated video mode. And so having this is probably the next best sort of option of not having a dedicated video button, but being able to switch the video. I mean, I'm switching right now. You don't even notice it, right? I'm switching video stills, video stills. And uh, uh, the, the and then when you go into the menus, it's just so smooth and easy to use that to me, that is probably the biggest bonus um, with the X-T4 is that firmware. It just makes it so much easier. The X-Pro3 has a similar firmware except for the separation of video and uh, and stills, but you know, the X-Pro3 is more of a shooter's camera. It had good video, but uh, it didn't make accessing video simple because you have to hit drive and then you gotta scroll all the way down to, uh, to video and it is a much more slow and cumbersome process. But for me, hybrid shooting video B-roll and then vlogging and then shooting stills and then back to video, me to upgrade, that's probably the number one reason is just this one switch. Even if it didn't have the minus six EV, even if it didn't have a classic neg, which I love, which actually feels kind of weird shooting it on this. I got so used to shooting classic neg on the X Pro 3 that it feels weird using it on the X-T4. I kind of like the, the Pro Neg standard or just the classic Chrome. Um, but uh, that's the one big reason for someone like me to switch over to the X-T4. And so those are the, the three um, let's throw number four, which is battery life. Actually, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't be guessing. This new battery is awesome. It, uh, you know, comparing the X-T4 to the X-T3, the battery life isn't fair because X-T3 did not have IBIS. So the X-T3 had, I think, 390 uh, frames on a single battery SEPA rating. Uh, but the X-H1, which I'm shooting this video on, had a 310. So it took 80 shots less than the X-T3 because a lot of it probably has to do with the IBIS uh, mech. And so this, uh, so 310 on the X-H1 with this new battery, you get 500 frames uh, so uh, I even noticed, you know, when I get a new camera, setting it up, setting the file structure the way I want it, I might spend like an hour and a half, two hours, just kind of playing and fiddling. And then you look at your battery life and like, oh, wow, it's like almost down to half what happened. Um, the X-T4, I noticed even after like kind of maybe around two hours, like on and off for like four or five hours, I'm just turning it on, switching it, turning off. It's like no battery loss. It the it retains the battery uh, quite well. And I shot with it that evening with Chris for probably two or three hours, and I think I lost like one bar. And so when you have the 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 um, the battery grip and you have three batteries, now you're kind of getting into the ter not yet, but like the GH4, GH5. The, it always had good battery life. The DSLRs always had good battery life. You're you're getting much closer. And so instead of having you know, those of us Fuji shooters, 12 of the older batteries, you're probably pretty darn good with three of them. Just remember, like for me, I think um, I got pricing, Canadian pricing of $99 for the new battery, Canadian, so maybe between $75 and $80 US for the for the uh, new battery. And then the charger is like another $100 Canadian, so again, maybe $75 to $80 US. And so you're in about $300 for the new dual charger and two extra batteries, because unlike the other X T3 and the XH1 where you can you have the AC adapter and you can actually use your your battery grip as a sort of a charger that you leave at home. You can't do that with this. You need to attach it to the body, but the through the USB type C, you do charge all three batteries. And so that's a good thing. But for me, I don't really see myself using uh, this adapter. I'd rather just have the two extra batteries 
and a pack somewhere. And so uh, I would just get the external charger, two batteries, $300, dishes are done. And so those are like the four big things. Uh, there's other small things that I like about this, but those are the four big things that I like. And so now let's move on to the things that I'm mm, indifferent about. All right, indifference, this new articulating screen. I'm indifferent because I do like that you can cover this like this, right? So it's, it's just, you can, like the X Pro 3, where is the X? Like the X Pro 3 here, you just cover the back, throw it in the bag, it makes it a little bit more rugged, especially if you're in a situation where it's pouring rain or windy or dusty, you just wanna protect the back, that's great. The thing I don't like about this is that if you do like shooting waist level, which I've started to really like doing it with the X Pro 3, because this articulating screen for waist level, for other things this is a hassle, but for waist level shooting, having the X Pro 3 is a lot of fun. You're tight, you're narrow, there's no EVF eye cup uh, in your way, and it's just a really nice way of shooting down low. With the X-T4, now you're going out sideways. I feel like I have a Canon 5D with me or the GH4, you know, and as you're shooting, what do you do with your other hand here? I remember my buddy Ryan from Arcade Original when we shot the documentary in Hong Kong and I, I, was, I used to tease him because Hong Kong is such a busy, narrow street and a couple times, I think he got kind of like, you know, tapped as he's walking past. You can kind of tap it as you're, as you're doing waist level. So that's the one thing I didn't like about the X-T4. So I like this, but I don't like this. I don't like that you can't articulate when this is in here like that. And for me, I don't need to be, I don't need to see myself when I vlog. It's unnecessary for me. And if I really need to monitor, I have an external 5.5 uh, inch monitor or I'm using the Mars 400S wireless monitoring system I'm using right now shooting this video, right? So I have this iPad and I can have this anywhere I want. There's a receiver end up to 400 feet away, you can uh, be monitoring as well. And with the Mars 400S, you can have up to, I think three or four IO, uh, uh, Android or iOS devices attached. So this is how I monitor. And, and considering the distance I am from the camera, this screen is so small, it's not gonna be a big deal. Like I don't, I can't really check focus. Like right now I have focus peaking on because I'm using a Minolta 24 millimeter f 2.8 MD lens and I can see like right here is bright red, right? Because I'm using focus peaking so I can see when I'm in focus. This is so tiny, I can't see focus peaking very well. So for video, for monitoring, this is way too small. Vlog I'm sure some vloggers will like it. Um, for me, I don't need to see myself when vlogging. So that's why I'm indifferent about this. One thing positive, one thing negative becomes neutral. And another thing I'm indifferent about is this deeper press uh, shutter button. It is dampened, it's quieter as I mentioned earlier, but it's a deeper press. And so if you don't like it, at least it's threaded. You can thread on the a soft shutter release to add a little bit more torque. But I have gotten used to it. You kind of get used to it, just like on the X-Pro3, I got used to the deeper press, but I do prefer the X-T3s, this regular feeling shutter uh, button, and the feather touch uh, shutter button on the X-H1 is divine once you get used to it because it's so feather touch that you accidentally start and stop video often, but you, you get used to it. And so that's kind of my uh, indifference. Finally, let's move on to the things that I don't like slash Hopefully they can improve. So the thing I don't like, and I mentioned it in my long, long video, is why they got rid of the headphone uh, jack here. So there's a microphone jack on the top, 3.5 inch, and then they have the remote control uh, plug in here, which um, I, I don't even know if Fujifilm makes a remote control. I don't know why that's even there. That should have been a headphone jack. I don't think anyone, you have the, the iPhone app anyways, or the Android app that you can remote trigger the camera anyway. So I don't see a need for this. And so that's really confusing. But since this is hardware, you can't change it. The X-T3 with the headphone and the, the microphone jack at, on the, the one door they had, that was a much better implementation. And as a side point, 
Uh, some people might not like this new setup on the X-T4. It was kind of necessary because of this front facing articulating screen with the door. The door would be kind of in the way. So it's nicer that they separated the power connection along the bottom here with the input connection up at the top here, right? So uh, that's probably why they, they changed it. That's another kind of an indifferent. I understand why they did it. Um, I don't like these rubbery, flappy, flippy kind of uh, doors here, but uh, the X-Pro3 has a door like this as well. I like the, the more firm, clear-cut door that's on the X-H1, and the X-T3 is even nicer because the door comes off. And so, yeah, th that's the, the one major flaw that I've discovered on the X-T4, and it's hardware-based, so you can't change it at all. And so, uh, in terms of improvements, uh, a lot of it is more other than that, like, let's get the headphone jack in there, guys. And of course, you can use the, uh, the USB-C, they give you adapter, and you can use that as a headphone jack, but then now, if you need to power up, you can't, because you can also use the USB-C to power up the camera, but if you're trying to power and you need to monitor, you can't do that. You need the the uh, battery grip, because in the battery grip has a headphone jack like the X-H1, and then you can type put in the uh, USB-C for power, which will charge up all three batteries. So I mean, it's, it's kind of a hit and miss, it's okay, uh, but, um, so everything else that um, that I think can be improved is all internal uh, in terms of the firmware and it's probably the same issues I had with the other cameras. So hopefully, and you know, Fujifilm has been pretty good at listening to what we want. One of them in video is if you are in, uh, if you are shooting 24 frames per second, I think you should be able to set it so that it automatically goes to 148th of a second. And if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, it automatically goes to 120, uh, 1 one twentieth of a second. Uh, you don't have to fiddle at changing that. And as well as going into the touch, uh, I forgot what they call it now. There's a new name. They don't call it silent mode. They call it movie optimized control mode. I wish you didn't have to touch the screen to get into it because if you are shooting this way and you're shooting video, you can't access uh, that quiet, the touch uh, menu. I mean, once you activate the this menu here, you can then switch to your joystick and, act, and and navigate through there, but not until you first press the screen. And so I wish you can make one of the custom function buttons access that. So Fujifilm, hopefully, Billy, can you pass that on to uh, Tokyo and see if they can do that. And there's other little things like that, that you know, like any camera manufacturer, they can constantly tweak the firmware, but those are the, the two glaring, there's probably other ones as well for stills photographers that are irritating, maybe you can kind of leave your comments down below and I will make sure that I pass it on to Fujifilm. In terms of IQ, I'm not going to post many pictures because since the X-T3 and then I tested the X-T30, the X-Pro3, and I do have the X-100V testing right now, they all, they all have the same processors, the same sensors. So in terms of image quality, it's gonna be the same. So, uh, you know, I posted maybe one or two pictures from here, but I will shoot, in terms of testing the different features, handheld one second exposures, actually pretty darn sharp, but it does come down to the lens that you have attached on here. And the way that IBIS works now is different from the way the X-H1 works. I think the algorithms are way more advanced, and now with the digital image stabilization uh, on the X-T4 in collaboration with OIS and IBIS, you're getting very complex algorithms. And so you check the, the chart, which lens has the most, up to 6.5 stops. So some of the lenses are still at like, I think five and five and a half stops. So look, I think this is one of those lenses that are, doesn't go to 6.5, I think it's five or, or 5.5. .5. And then other lenses that were much lower, all of a sudden now get 6.5. And I can't, I couldn't see the pattern uh, why, but uh, it seems like a lot of the primes, no problem, 6.5. Although the 200 F2 doesn't get to 6.5. So I couldn't figure it out. So that's it. That's my first impressions with the brand new Fujifilm X-T4. Overall, very impressed, very happy. Um, look for a long-term review. I don't know, I, I think I get this for another week and then I have to ship it back. And then I'll probably put one on pre-order uh, and uh, wait like everybody else. And you know, since this body is being made in China, it might, you know, with the whole, uh, the COVID-19 that's happening, uh, not just in China, but the focus is on China. I think there are gonna be manufacturing issues. Even if this was made in Japan, the supply chain still comes from China because you know, Japan 
has no natural resources. They have to import cardboard. You know, that import wood to make cardboard. They have to import metal to make chassis. So even if this was made in Japan, they would still have a supply chain issue if a lot of the, the raw materials is coming from China, but this is also assembled in China and the entire global supply chain because you know it's a Sony raw sensor. So even if it's made in Japan, that Sony sensor, it still is made for Fujifilm with their specs. And again, supply chain, a lot of the raw materials to make this uh, the silicone chip might be coming from China. And so uh, all that will play into how quickly we can get this. Fujifilm gave us a, a date of sometime in April. So hopefully they've already started manufacturing um, and uh, maybe there just be a handful of these coming out. So uh, look for a long-term review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, click for any of the links down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Oh, I'm in video mode. I gotta get back into stills mode, and here we go. I think by the time, by the time I'm done with this camera from 300,000 uh, actuations, this might be down to like 100,000. Sorry, Billy. you or not but 